and we're back. That was Colour Theory, like that tune. Uh, we are talking to Change Your Focus and you are listening to Unity in Our Community. Now, these guys have done something really incredible and they, have, I feel, building a kind of bridge between people wanting to get into film and how do they do it? How do they go about it? And the rich film industry that we have here in Wales. Um, yeah, so everybody needs to be benefiting from that. And uh, in the break, we were just chatting a little bit about, Dave, how you got into this kind of work. And we were mentioning languages. And you've also mentioned the Welsh language. So if some of our listen listeners out there, they have language skills and that's another skill that's transferable i, I think I, I think there's an element of luck about about in my case very much an, an element of luck because i yeah. grew up in a very small valleys village yeah uh where working in film was just not part of the, com- of the conversation yeah things have changed now because there's lots of great uh, initiatives out in the south Wales valleys in particular mm. uh, things like it's my shout the uh, screen alliance are working out there as mm. well mm. film cymru they're trying to kind of develop talent out there. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, th- th- that didn't exist. Uh, so I I had to go away. I worked abroad for a while, and I, I basically I met someone in a bar, and uh, I spoke uh, three languages fluently. They needed an English language interpreter on set, and that was my wow. that that was my entree to the to the industry. Yeah, yeah. Basically, translating for. On an international film production, <laughs> um, it, everything was in. What this. language was it? Uh, translating from Spanish. In, oh God! Translating from English I'm asking you to into, rat your brain into now. <laughs> Spanish and Catalan, but then yeah. back. So the director was Catalan, but yeah. he would speak sometimes in Catalan, sometimes in Spanish, and then translate into the actors who were from everywhere, so like Germany, Italy, Norway. So very much in the, in the <laughs> middle of it. So there's yeah. this mal- j- just like fruit cocktail of languages got going on. Wow. So, but I, I guess I, I'd i never considered really working from film until that opportunity came. Mm. And I thought, I love this. Mm. The first film I worked on was a pirate movie. So I thought every film was going to be like, uh, you know, I was going to be on boats going up and down the Costa of Brava. But uh, I thought, <laughs> oh, it's just like be, working. It must have been nice. <laughs> it, was, it, it was, but you think, oh, every film's like working on a pirate movie. And it is in some sense. And I think uh, uh, a set is very non-hierarchical. You yeah. Know, pe- I think generally people are quite, quite respectful towards Absolutely. each other. Absolutely. I, I love friendly. the atmosphere on a set. Yeah. It's about working in, in teams. So I think if that's what you like to do and you like being part of something, mm. part of something that, that, that's kind of big and exciting and you feel that you've contributed to it, mm. I think it's a great place to, to it's work. It's exciting, I think. You yeah, know. and in terms of like, like, like Welsh language, for, for instance, is uh, if you are a Welsh speaker, if you've been to Welsh school, there, there are opportunities there because there is so much uh, Welsh language production going on yeah. now in comparison to a few years ago. Yeah, so you might be out there, you might be a fluent Welsh speaker and you might think, oh, I'd like to get into film. You know what to do. Get onto the website, changeyourfocus.org. Changeyourfocus.org. Um, and uh, get in touch with these with their website, watch the videos that are on there um, because that is a great skill and a lot of people have that Welsh language skill and they might not realise how that could open that door. Uh, yeah, very true. And, uh, you know, if on top of that, you've also got those transferable skills we've talked about. I mean, one of the big takeouts from one of the interviews we did with mm. uh, the caterers, they're more interested in your ability to have, like, a, was it a H3, H3 license or well, whatever it oh, is? Oh, the health and hygiene. Uh, no, no, it's the license. It's the driving license. Yeah. Oh, it's the, the heavy goods vehicle yeah. license. Yeah, m- it is really important because you can Because you have to drive the van. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so you can, you can get your, what, what do you call it, your, your catering and your health and safety qualification on, online. Mm. But having the driving license is really, really important. Mm. Have you ever been down to Oasis where they, because down there they get all the... Um, the refugees and asylum seekers, they are helping them with their, they do the catering, um, they, uh, health and hygiene and stuff. They help them get that. So, you know, maybe the next step would be for like some of those guys who've got the health and hygiene, you know, to get their um, heavy goods. Is it heavy goods vehicles? Is that what it stands for? Yeah. yeah. 
I think um, I think one of the, the, the you can Dave talk about sort of takeaways. Um, mm. Pardon the food, food and catering part. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know if someone's listening to this and they themselves perhaps are a job seeker or they're they're looking for a change of career. Um, there's a communities for work team in Cardiff. Community yeah. for, communities for work, sorry, communities for work plus teams in in all local authorities in Wales. So although we've primarily been focused on RCT for the time being for the, for the last couple of couple of months. Um, you know, a lot of this knowledge is 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 uh, sort of transferable, um, you know, across different parts of Wales. So go go to your local team, go to the advisors as well, all of which have Facebook pages, you know, links on on, on council websites, etc. Hmm. Um, and and hopefully people are maybe thinking, Do you know what, maybe in the past they thought, oh, this isn't for me, or this isn't for people like us who live in our particular community or neighbourhood. Yeah. Whereas actually, again, as as, as the campaign is demonstrating. That's not necessarily the case. No. Um, and then and then go to the advisors and say, actually, this is something I want to do because a lot of this stuff, although it's been for RCT primarily, it does transfer across you know most parts of Wales, certainly in the south and southeast, because obviously of where the concentration of productions is taken, it, you know, tends to take place, but you know not exclusively here. Mm. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, a great opportunity, f- and obviously there is a lot of jobs there, and they're they're looking. They're looking to, you know, fill those fill those jobs. So, um, is there anything else, guys, that we haven't covered? You know, about what you're doing. What's what's your aim? I guess it's to get more people into the industry here in South Wales or the whole of Wales. I think there are so many good reasons from, you know, so sustainability. Uh, you know, cutting down on travel. I think things yeah. like sustainable productions are really important. So yeah. we're not bussing people in from. Uh, you know, you know the four corners of the UK, and we're keeping things as local yeah. as po- possible. That's got to be a good thing. That's a really good thing. That's a really good point, actually. Um, I was watching a behind the scenes thing on Netflix today, and they, they were in this big script reading. And they every single one had plastic bottles on the table, and I was thinking, <laughs> oh my god, you know, you know, because sustainability obviously is very important, and I guess same for any industry. You know, we've got to start thinking. In different oh, and ways, we wa- and we want to keep keep the money as you know. Is, we want to keep the money in the local economy as much as possible. Yeah, These why shouldn't it benefit people here? Yeah, about. yeah, I, absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree with you guys, and I think it's fantastic what you're doing. And we just had some things on the radio chat, you know, like some people there, you know, wanting to get into to film. So, um, yeah, you get in touch with these guys. It's, uh, let's say the name again. Change your focus. So get in touch. Go onto their website. Have a look at the videos they've got. And just like have a little explore if you've wanted to be in film and you don't have to be young, which is um, good. You know, you can have all of those transferable skills like we've been talking about. Um, is there any other jobs in the film that we might not have thought of or said today? I'm just trying to think. Oh, it's carpentry. Uh, we've talked about rigging, haven't we? Which is basically hanging things or place the things and how you place it. Uh, anything, anything else? Uh, I think the chaperone one is an interesting one. Yeah. Because we haven't talked about, about that. So yeah, maybe so people with child qualifications. Which yeah, with childcare really qualifications, yeah. Um, one obvious one. Um, not that I have much need for anyone with hair and beauty skills, um, but hair and beauty. Yeah, and that was one that came out certainly with the engagement in, in Valley's communities mm. that we did. Um, you know, there's any number of maybe uh, young people who are you know maybe renting a chair in a local salon, um, doing hair, all of which. Oh is yeah, that's fine. a good idea. Hairdressers. The, the, the need for hairdresses. Yeah. For makeup and beauty design. For the yeah. Special effects because, side but, things. But, but, it's huge. Because just to explain a little bit, you imagine like a big production. Maybe you've got a scene with seventy people. You need a lot of hairdressers. Yeah, yeah, and if it's, a pe- <laughs> if it's period. You know, you know yeah. to the power too. So uh, yeah. you know, there, there are even if it's not not uh, you know full time, there are dailies as well that can be picked up on things mm. like that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, and it'd be a good rate, a daily rate. It'd be pretty good, I imagine. Yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah so um, so that's important as well. There's a new one that my brother was talking about, but I think it might be expensive to do the course, but like which is intimacy coach. On set, yeah, but you know? I think you'd need specialist qualifications for that, yeah. I think, to start with. To start so that, with. So that's the kind of thing you'd come through drama school, I think. Okay. Or, uh, rather than, uh, I can't imagine how you could do that unless you understood the dynamics of of performance. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess you could learn it, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it comes back to, again, 
the, the, the sort of like the ethical dimension to the to the research and to the campaign. Mm. It's not about sugarcoating it that anybody can do any job. Some jobs are specialist. Mm. Some jobs require qualifications. Some will require maybe ten years experience or more. Yeah, um, but it's but what we're saying is that just because it's clear that there are those doesn't mean that there aren't more kind of entry level. For a yeah, because then it. once you're there, you start and learning, don't and you? Building and a program like C for W Plus, for example, yeah, has maybe a, up to about two months period when someone gets a role somewhere where they can still pro- be supported. So you can have in work support as well. It's not just about getting support from the program when you're looking for work, mm. or maybe once you've been perhaps released from a role um, for, for, for whatever reason, you can also get that support. So again, the advisors on that program through this work being better informed about the sort of things we've just talked about, yeah. the career progression, what other qualifications can perhaps be gained and built on and so on, um, you know, has also been a significant part of it as well. But also, like we said, you know, once, you're, once you've got an entry level and you can just observe, I feel, and meet people, then you just don't know where it's going to lead. Yeah, you could go. I, I was, I kind of started at a lowly level. So having done that yeah. job, then I became a runner. So you're literally making sort of teas and coffees on set. Yeah. And eventually, I became a director and producer. So you can rise up yeah. uh, within the industry. The industry is interested if you can do the the job, as opposed to if you've got paper qualifications. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is nice. I think it's nice um, that there is those opportunities and I think a lot of the creative arts are like that you know like same as music business you don't necessarily need a degree you need to like meet somebody start working in studio you know yeah and I think if somebody was to look at their 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 lives their 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 circumstances they could be running a family you know we all know how 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 complicated and busy that can be Mm. um you know they could have transferable skills from from a whole range of of fairly domestic or, or or routine aspects of life yeah. that the sector is interested in. One of the people we interviewed as part of the research was saying that he goes and speaks to, um, and he's a very senior senior yeah. role in the industry, he goes and speaks to academy rugby players, so aspiring mm. professional rugby players. Mm. Not all of them are going to make it. No. In fact, life. No. But he sees how attractive they are potentially to the film and TV industry because they are fit and strong. Yeah. They're, okay, may have age on their side in, 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 in that respect, but they, they are used to working in a, a teamwork environment, mm. clearly. Um, and then one of the things he sort of says, they follow very strict diet and conditioning plans and routines. And if they don't, then they get found out on the rugby pitch. And that's a cruel place to get, <laughs> <laughs> to get to, for that to be found out. So the ability to follow plans. Okay, a diet and nutrition plan isn't really going to be needed in the TV and film sector, but following plans is. Yeah. So the transferability of that. So look at yourself. Rugby players. Individual. As well, the potential rugby yeah. players, or yeah. sports sports people, people who are used to working in a team, who can cooperate, who yeah. can negotiate. But also, I was having this conversation, and I was saying to my son, one time I put mother on my CV because that involves everything, every skill, managing, like timekeeping, like cooking, everything. <laughs> and that would that, that would get you noticed as well. I would certainly know if a CV came with that on it. I would certainly want to speak to you. And yes, mothers. Yeah, because it shows, <laughs> imagi- it shows imagination also as you, you grab in my attention. That's really interesting. Yeah, because it's the most... Im- I, I've been thinking about it a lot. It's like the most important job, like bringing up another human being and, you know... And, and, and sort of meeting every their every need is probably transferable to some of the prima donnas that you find on set. I don't know, Dave. Yeah, I'll leave that. Actors. I, 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 I'm, I'm I call them tractors. <laughs> I, I, I say, oh, are you a tractor, darling? Yes. Okay. That's what I call them. That's our little joke. And that drama is for the stage or the set. Nowhere yes, else. Yes. Not behind the scenes. <laughs> on the stage. On the stage. Yeah. Before we go, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your films? Or, you know, because I'm kind uh, of interested. Oh, right, okay. Uh, I make uh, creative documentaries. So, yeah, what did uh, you... Which generally I make uh, co-productions with uh, Central and Eastern Europe. So there's one on general release at the moment in yeah. Czechoslovakia. Wow. Which is called Pongo Calling, which has won loads of prizes everywhere, which is about a Roma family in Manchester, Czech Roma okay, family in Okay, amazing. Uh, I'm doing another one at the moment with a, which is a Polish Polish Wales co-production, which is about a guy with electromagnetic hypersensitivity syndrome. Oh, that's re- that's so interesting. Oh right, okay, yeah. tell me more. Well, 
because I've heard about that oh. like a little bit and um I've kind of experienced maybe some people having that at some point, you know, and then they're like, ah, oh, the microwave. Ugh. It's it's kind of an allergy to the 21st first century. So it's quite interesting. I mean, who isn't allergic to the 21st <laughs> century, century, frankly? Yeah, yeah. In, many, <laughs> in, ma- in many ways. Yeah. So that's another one. And uh, I, I'm currently developing a couple of other things. Doing one in Bosnia at the moment, which right. we're kind of developing, which is wow. interesting. Wow. Can yeah. can when when are they watchable or uh, the, the the Polish one I'm hoping will be out in festivals I think in okay. a cu- couple of years. We'll share your focus. They'll share it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we I mean, mean change your focus. And, sorry. And uh, I'll come back and talk to you when yeah the, come back and talk when, when the Roma one is ready for screening in Cardiff. Yeah. I'll come back and talk to you. Oh, I would love that. I definitely would love to support independent Welsh filmmakers. Amazing. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate appreciate you guys coming in so anyone out there who's enjoyed this program and um, we will be resharing it on unity our community um and you guys are going to reshare it as well um so people can listen again but it's changeyourfocus.org yeah and the report's available from there and it's also available on our website stryon.co.uk um, stryon is welsh for stories oh stryon s-t-r-a-e-o-n Okay, so there. so if somebody wants to come at it a bit more from that kind of research perspective, maybe the uh, you know the, the the economic aspects of this, um, then yeah, this yeah, is it's so there. important the research side of things, isn't it? A lot goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> All right, thank you guys, thank you so much. I hope the listeners have enjoyed that. And um, like we said, if you want to get into film and TV in this brilliant industry that is here in South Wales, then get in touch with Change Our Focus. Dot org. Right, I'm going to play Green Tea Peng, Soul Boy, another one of my favourites. Hope you're not sick of it. I'm not. I love it. And I'll be back after this. <laughs> Decide when it was that I chose to confide in you. But ever since that day, I'm feeling like ten times lighter, and I want to say thank you for showing me why you know me. No one knows me like you do for guiding me. Why you lead me, you give me the strength to move through. Illuminates is so bright. I want to say thank you, illuminate it so wide. Watch your spirit just shine through me, illuminate it so wide. I want to say thank you, illuminate it so wide. Ooh, 
all that screen tea peng and soul boy oh, i love that chat with those guys oh my gosh i'm so excited for um all of us to get involved in film if we want to um because it's such a interesting line of work and it's right here um on our doorstep in cardiff so much going on um yeah so i hope you enjoyed that and i just before i go quickly i had a couple of other best bits that i've heard this is a very short one here from caroline lucas who was talking about the um the bill you know the bill the bill the kill the bill and um all of those lovely things that um uk uh, government trying to put through but i just thought i'd play this because i love her and she is fire what tell me what you think this country is indeed a compassionate country and it deserves better than you. And I am utterly against this bill. I think it's illegal, immoral, it's divisive, uh-huh. it's dangerous. I think it's grotesquely inhumane, it's cruel. Yes, you bet. Uh, the Green Party is absolutely against this bill. It's, it's unworkable, as Sarah set out, but I think it's, it's also utterly uh, uh, immoral. I, th- I think that um, to treat some of the most vulnerable people in the world in this way is wrong. And I think as well that unless you're going to put safe and legal routes in place, then you're never going to solve the problem at source. That is what people need. And the idea that somehow the UK needs to uniquely break international law because we are uniquely being affected by this is just wrong. 17 EU countries take more refugees than we do and asylum seekers. We are well down that list. Oh, there we go. Fire from Caroline Lucas there. Um, I can't remember which programme she was on. It's one of the programmes. But yeah, we love her. We're a big fan of her um, saying it how it is. So uh, yeah, what do you think about that? Um, You can always get in touch um, and share your point of view. Um, You've been listening to Unity in the Community. I hope you enjoyed today's show with Change Your Focus Dot org. So yeah, go to their website, check out their research um, because it sounds so interesting um, what they've been up to. And if you've always wanted to get into film, you know what to do. Get in touch with them, stay in touch with us, give us a follow online, Unity in our community, um, or you can email Unity Community Radio Show at gmail.com. I will see you next week. Bye.